The heart of every man craves a great adventure, but life doesn't usually feel that way. Jesus speaks of narrow gates and wide roads, but the masculine journey is filled with many twists and turns. So how do we keep from losing heart while trying to find the good way when life feels more like a losing battle than something worth dying for? Grab your gear and come on a quest with your band of brothers who will serve as the guides in what we call the masculine journey. The masculine journey starts here now. Welcome to the Masculine Journey. We are very glad to have you with us today, and this is a special day for us, isn't it, Robbie? Oh, wow. It's not even an eve, is it? <laughs> no, but it ought to be. It ought to be. It's a very, very special day because we have some friends in the studio we haven't seen for a while. One of these voices you might recognize, would one of our friends sitting right across from me say hello? I am, how are you doing out there? <laughs> <laughs> for you guys that haven't listened in a while, that's our friend Vinny. He hasn't been able to uh, be with us, and we're excited to have him back and also in studio we have al which we couldn't encourage to get on the radio with us today and, and andy that are sitting in and listening and there's robbie and dennis and uh, Vinny and i and we're going to be visiting one of the pillar topics that we talked about a couple weeks ago we're going to be talking about actually the one that we called the foundation obviously the foundation is christ but the foundation of faith in christ is what we build upon but often that time it's a blind faith you know, and, and Vinny, I know this topic for you was one that was one that you wanted to talk about because blind faith means something a little different to you sometimes than it does us. But then you also have a point about how often we all step out in blind faith. That's exactly right because I've learned since I'm blind how grateful I am for the other senses that I have feeling, hearing, and learning how much faith God has put into me because my sight is gone. How many people just get up in the morning, get up, go out to the car, open the door, stick the key in there, and it's going to start? Well, how do you think that happens? You know, you just think automatically it's going to start. You have to have faith in that. How do, you, how do the people that are being wheeled in for an operation. You know, they don't know who's in the operating room. They tell you to count to five, you can't get to four, and you're in there, and some stranger's going to cut you up, you know, <laughs> and, and do what uh, he's doing. Go that is blind <laughs> faith. That's what I mean by blind faith. And I found out that most everything that you do in your everyday life has to do with faith. Even a person that don't believe in God. Uh, how could I put this? Uh, this faith in his every moment of that day. Whatever he does, he doesn't realize it. You know, like starting the car, uh, walking up the steps. Using his debit card, sometimes that takes faith. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Robbie. That's true. The point is that almost everything you can think of, there's faith behind it. And behind the faith is God. He's the one that gives you that faith. You may not understand it. Like I didn't understand it, I complained. Why did you make me blind? Why? You know. And I realized, you know, the old saying that, God has a purpose for everybody here, and we're on this earth, and he's not finished with us until we go home. Well, he wasn't finished with me. He made me blind. I can't see the guys across the way from me here, and I'm sure they're all ugly as they were the <laughs> seven months <laughs> ago. It's worse. It's worse than it was. Uh, there you go. It's worse. Uh, you know, I found out that there is a purpose for me. Just like tonight. I haven't been here in six months because I was, I had some sight and I was managing. Now I have no sight. And I spend my days in bed thinking about God and thinking all the things that He has given me. And it comes to me in faith that I have in Him. And if you don't have faith in God, you better find it. Yeah. 
Well, Vinny, I'm, I want to come back and ask you a question here in a few minutes, but we have some really good clips um, from back in the movies you saw, you know, before we were even around to some degree. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not making, making fun of that. I'm just saying before we really even were aware that there were movies, in a lot of cases there were some movies here that were really good that had Academy Awards. And they were about, we have a couple different movie clips about people that had disability. But I think it's really cool when you listen to this clip, we're going to play one from um, Joe Belinda, or Johnny Belinda, I guess I could say it right, from Johnny Belinda. But somebody had to have faith that things didn't have to stay the way they were for this girl that was deaf, right? And so this person has some faith and steps into her life. And I want you to, to listen to this clip and listen to how lack of faith there is in there at sometimes. And how there's also faith that starts to bloom in the midst of this clip. All the grand ideas that doctor's been putting into her head. Filling her up with fancy notions. You know what she was doing instead of feeding the hogs? Brushing her hair. That's not fair to me. I'm doing the work of six. What's this I hear about you loafing all day? There's work to do. Aggie, did you see that? She knew what I was saying. Ah, tush. She can hear. Belinda, come here. I tell you, she understands, woman. You're wandering in your head. But she came when I called her. She was reading your lips. She's been a very good pupil. Belinda. Belinda, how do you say hello to a friend? That's right. I am happy to see you. And I am happy to see you. You're telling me she can talk that way? Of course. We've been studying a book of signs which were devised by a Frenchman a couple of hundred years ago. The Abbe de la Paix was a priest. You see, each word has its own sign. And that's mother, baby. You see, woman with a child. It's beyond belief. It's as clear as day. What is it? It's a butterfly, sure. It is a butterfly. It flutters. Aggie! Aggie, come here. I got something. What? Look sharp now. Think fast. What does this mean? It means you've gone loony. <laughs> it's a butterfly. Look. Don't go waving your hands at me. I'm not the dummy. And if you want to have any bread to eat while I'm gone, leave me be. It's a good job you're going. Have peace around here for a couple of days. It's like a miracle. Did she be saying, Father? Yes, she did. It's the first time she ever called me that. Daughter. My daughter. So, Robbie, as you listen to that clip, there's some, some faith in that father that begins to happen, isn't it? As, he, as he's watching this unfold with his daughter and this teacher. Yeah, it's another aspect of faith that, you know, God, like Vinny says, God puts faith in us, but faith in other people is nothing, well, it's something I really had a long way to learn, and it reminded me clearly of, you know, when I first went to work in the special ministries class at and at Calvary, and these people were hitting the air with their fist, and it looked crazy to me. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't see the value of these people, just like in the case of Agnes Moorhead, she didn't see the value in her daughter, that she wasn't the dummy, that's what she said. But after you get a chance to, and and now that I've worked with them for 20 years, oh, my soul, these people bring an aspect of the kingdom that is precious and unique. And interestingly, Sam, it's it's similar for me today as, you know, as Al walks in here and Vinny walk in here. They bring an aspect of the kingdom we haven't had since Mm -hmm. they've been gone, and it's sorely missed. Um but it it has to do with having faith like you always talk about having a good faith that your brother has a good heart mm-hmm. and that God put him here to bring the kingdom it, when when i was listening to that clip i was just hearing how cool that you know god had some plan for these people way back right that this girl was going to need somebody and he plays it on somebody's heart to go help you know and there's there's some unity that happens in that family you know, I've never seen the movie. I'm hoping that the mother comes around at some point. But if not, she'll just go on to be on Bewitched and really not be <laughs> yeah, liked no, at yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> but there was Uncle Albert to get her straight. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's who uh, Agnes Warhead was. She was in Dora on Bewitched, if you uh, 
haven't seen that. But Vinny, I want to go back to a, a question for you, if if that's okay. Sure. How would you say some of your faith has changed as you went into this journey of becoming blind? You know, would you say that your faith has changed in God in different ways? At the very beginning, naturally, it was anger. And, you know, I guess everybody, if something like that happens to them, it's a normal thing. But as you sit back and start to contemplate and think of the rest of your life, why should you waste the rest of your life? Because you're here and God put you here. And I've always believed that if you're here, there's a reason you're here. And it it took me a while to search what the reason was. But to get to that reason, I had to go to God and have faith. So what it put into me was listen, smell, feel, and you're worthy. Mm -hmm. And you're worthy again. So, yeah. I don't have to shut the lights out in my room because I can't see him on, mm, you know. Point. So I just go along with it now. We play games. Sometimes I get angry at God. And I say, hey, why did you put my shoes in the wrong place? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, that, that, and that's true because I live with friends of mine and they try and help me by, you know, straighten up for me. And I tell them, don't straighten up because I won't find it. <laughs> That's right. I'm blind here. I I'm blind. blind. <laughs> I know where I left it. So it all goes back to, you know, putting your faith fully, fully, I mean fully, into God. Yeah. And thank you. Dennis, I wanted to ask you a question. In your journey over the last few years, and we've talked about it on the show some, but mm-hmm. how would you say that your faith in God has changed as you've you know, stepped into some new seasons of your life and, and are in a, a very fresh season now. Yeah. How would you say that some of that faith relationship has changed, this blind faith that Vinny's talking about? I, th- I thought I had faith um, until I stepped into Winston-Salem Rescue Mission and I realized I had a lot of faith to, to go to. And we can talk about that after the break, but uh, it's definitely changed things for me. Yeah, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And while we're talking about faith... I'd like for you to take some faith in us and go to the boot camp registry on MasculineJourneyRadio.org and register for the boot camp coming up in November. I have a certain, certain feeling God has something special in store for you there. Hi, this is Sam with Masculine Journey. I'm here with my son, Eli. We're going to talk about ways that you can help support the ministry. One way you can go to smile.amazon.com. There's information on our website there on how to do that. Then you can go to Facebook.com, where you can click the Donate button, or you can go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org. Once again, look for the Donate button. Or if you want to mail something in, mail it to P.O. Box 550, Kernersville, North Carolina, 27285. Sam, this November boot camp could literally change a lot of men's life. I talk to a lot of men, they're saying... They say they don't know what their place is in the grand scheme of things. They don't know how to behave as Christian men. God designed us for freedom, and it's coming up at this boot camp. It is. Go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org to register now. Just $169 early bird pricing for four amazing days. Go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org. Register now. Dennis, I am actually proud of you. You didn't sing that. Normally, you just <laughs> uh, start singing a he song. He was playing the air guitar, though. I, I wouldn't thought. sing it. <laughs> I was expecting Alan and Andy to sing it because I know that Warrant was one of their favorite hair bands of the 80s, yeah. you know, back in the day. But you know something I thought about that little clip there? The song was called Blind Faith. I was looking for a song called Blind Faith. Is that, uh, you know, I play a song on a contemporary Christian station every once in a while that has it, a... WBFJ. It's okay. Okay, good deal. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. But... We'll play a song every once in a while. You hear some of the lyrics, and you'll think, 
well, he could be talking about a girl there until mm-hmm. he gets to the part where he's talking about God. So I kind of turned it around with this, and I thought, if you go back and listen to that, the guy singing, I've got blind faith in you, before you find out he's talking about a girl in this case, how much do we think about that with God? You know, I don't understand everything you do. I don't understand the plan laid out before me, but I'm going to have blind faith in you. I've never seen you face to face, but I'm going to have blind faith mm-hmm. in you. It's pretty powerful. It is. I'm still actually stuck on the thought of Andy liking a hairband before he, why he still had hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Andy goes way back with the hairbands. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to kiss his head, though. <laughs> no, when we were uh, leaving for break, Dennis, you were talking a little bit about the, the blind faith journey that you stepped into when you walked back into the, the Win- or walked into the Winston-Salem Rescue Mission. You know, And looking back now with the perspective of looking back, how much has your faith changed and how much would you say your blind faith has changed over that time? Well, I walked into a situation where I, my dependency on God had to hit a level that had never been in my life, and I had no idea that that's what was going to happen. But I had to depend on God that I would have food to eat. I had to depend on God that I would have a roof over my head. I had to depend on God that I would be able to get along with these other men who came from all walks of life, a lot of them spending a lot of their lives on the streets. I didn't know how to interact with guys like that because really, truly, except for an occasional week-long mission trip, I'd never had a relationship with someone that, that had lived a different lifestyle than I'd lived. So I would find myself oftentimes early in the morning and late in the evening just praying to God for the faith to continue on from day to day. And sometimes it was from moment to moment, particularly in those initial 90 days or so that I was there. So coming out of that, it created a a faith for me and God that I'd never had before, a real dependency on him that I'd never really understood until I walked into that situation, and also a real faith in humanity. And we've, you know, we've had some bad things happen in our country lately. We've had some bad things happen in my home state of Virginia. And I think it's a time for us to look at what, where our faith lies. Do we have faith in humanity? Do we have faith in forgiveness and forgiving others? Uh, anyhow, that's probably more than you bargained for. But for me, that's what it, it comes down to as far as faith. Well, I, yeah. I think that it's a, a question of what do we have faith in? Yeah. Right. And, and having blind faith in God. Vinny, I know that you talked a little bit about, you know, the people that are blind that that have a dog. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. and honestly, the, the not to make a pun, but the blind faith it takes to, to be with that dog, doesn't it? Exactly. I mean, it's a dog. I mean, if you had eyesight, you'd probably slap it in the rear because it wouldn't do what you told. But this dog is so smart that you have built a faith with a dog. Now, how does that happen? God enters your body and says, you better trust in him because he trusts in me. And, you know, there's so many different ways to explain faith. And uh, when it happens, a a tragic thing happens. Okay, uh, Dennis just touched on it, what's going on in the world. Do we all realize that we have the faith in two people that are crazy? You know, one, well, I don't know if he's crazy, but they got their fingers on a button that could just eliminate everything. I don't think that's what God wants. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what God wants. You know, I I think that we do want to have faith that, that God created something in human that's redeemable. That's right. Right, that's why he sent his son. To have it, and I want to go to a clip from one of our favorite movies that we've used, and it's from Les Mis. And this is the part where the bishop and Jean Valjean yeah. is talking. And where we pick it up is is Jean Valjean had stayed there the night before and had robbed the bishop and the lady that lives there. I can't remember the nun. I guess it would be yeah, she's a nun. Yeah, um, and the nun of their silver. But and then he gets arrested and brought back to face the bishop. And I want you to listen to the exchange here and come back and we're going to talk a little bit about faith in what God does in humans. So we'll use wooden spoons. I don't want to hear anything more about it. I'm sorry to disturb you. You caught him. But I had my eye on this man. Oh, thank and... God. I'm very angry with you, Jean Valjean. What happened to your eye, Monseigneur? Didn't he tell you he was our guest last night? Oh, yes. After we searched his knapsack, 
and found all this silver. He claimed <laughs> that you gave it to him. Yes. Of course I gave him the silverware. But why didn't you take the candlesticks? That was very foolish. Madame Gillo, fetch the silver candlesticks. They're worth at least 2,000 francs. Why did you leave them? Hurry. Monsieur Valjean has to get going. He's lost a lot of time. Did you forget to take them? Are you saying he told us the truth? Of course. Thank you for bringing him back. I'm very relieved. Release him. You're really letting me go? Didn't you understand the bishop? Madame Gino, offer these men some wine. They must be thirsty. Thank you. And don't forget. Don't ever forget. You've promised to become a new man. Promise? Why are you doing this? Jean Valjean, my brother. You no longer belong to evil. With this silver, I bought your soul. I've ransomed you from fear and hatred. And now I give you back to God. Now, Vinny, that was a clip that uh, really was important to you that we played right. for this. And, and so talk a little bit about what that clip really speaks to you in this topic of blind faith. Well, I have to go back to... Uh, you know, the the faith that the bishop had in him that it would work, first of all. Uh, and it worked for me, I know that. I didn't get silver, I got darkness. But for me it was God and my deceased wife who took care of me and made me live like a decent human being instead of a blind old fool. And what the bishop did with this man, as he says, I bought your soul. Well, I feel that my soul was bought by God. And he just put the faith in me to trust in him in every moment of my life, of every day of my life. And I know that when he calls me, I owe him a lot. I don't know what I could do, you know, maybe. What? What do you do with clouds? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, Dust them? <laughs> you can't <laughs> sweep them, you know. I don't yeah. want to fall through. But I, 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 I owe him something as... What was his name? John Bill John? John Bill John, yeah. Yeah. Owed the bishop, and he paid him. Right. He paid him. If you see the whole movie, you'll understand a lot more of that scene. He did pay him. Well, many and, and uh, you've actually paid God as well, because when, yes. when you look at that movie, Jean Valjean paid by loving others well and helping others well. And, right. And, as long as I've known you, you've loved others very well. And so that debt is constantly being paid, right? That God's trusted you to love others in your life around you the, the way no one else can. And, you know, I mean, I'll, obviously Christ paid the debt. And it's been paid, but that, that desire to give back, the desire to give more to God, you're living out through how you treat others and love on others just as Jean Valjean did. Yeah, well, I thank you for that, uh, and I'm going to live on. Absolutely. I'm going to live on, and I'm going to continue on. Well, we hope so, because we want to have you back here and talking to us. We'd love to have you back, you know, well, weekly. Yeah, I'm just putting a plug in. I, uh, We'd love to have you back and love to have Al back, now that he can't say anything over there. But yeah. we'd really like to have uh, have you guys back. To, to and, I would, and I would love to be back, but it's I live so far away now. Yeah, you do. You know, and it's, it's difficult, but my heart, Every Tuesday night is here, yeah, uh, with you guys, and and I wish I can't see you because I'm pretty sure you did get ugly. 
Yeah, it, it's without a doubt. We, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we could just you could take our word for that. That's one. that's blind uh, faith. Yeah, yeah, that's reality. Reality. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I was listening to this clip, Robbie, you know, the thing that really struck me is, of course, a bishop has faith that Jean Valjean can be different, right? But that faith is really rooted in the work God's going to do in his life, right? Yes, there's an act of grace that's given by the bishop, but yet. Unless God kind of steps in and fills that void and, and continues that grace, isn't that where the change really occurs in people's lives is, is with God's interaction after that initial grace? I know there's not really a question there. Yeah, there's, well, that's a great, it's, and to follow the movie, you see, he doesn't really get it right there. He's just in a period of shock. Like, what in the world just happened? I was arrested. I was going to jail. I'm on my way. And as he begins to leave town, you'll see he comes up upon a cross and he goes to his knees. Um, and, and he sees that it wasn't just the bishop that was, you know, in, in involved in his life at this point in time, that he really had made a promise to make a new, to be a new man. And, and it was God that was going to make that available to him. And, it, and it's a wonderful movie. And that's really where the faith and humanity can come in. That just as a bishop's heart was changed and he reaches out to touch another, that we also can reach out to touch another and maybe show them something that will lead them back to the foot of the cross, that will lead them back to God, so that their life can totally be changed. We're still going to be flawed. We're still going to make mistakes. But God will use us to work in others' lives if we let him. And we just give ourselves to him in that blind faith, knowing that he's got us where he wants us and he's taken us where he wants us to go. We'll talk to you next week and go register for a boot camp, masculinejourneyradio.org.